Mind, Brain and Consciousness, a presentation by Professor Gershom Zajczyk, Faculty of Medicine, Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Abstract. Philosophy deals with medical phenomena from a perspective which is not relevant to medicine. Philosophy and medicine are two thought styles. I present a framework for the medical thought style. Its name is Wisdom of the Body. Wisdom of the Body is a theory that provides a simple framework for medically relevant concepts in our culture. Introduction. So, philosophy deals with medical phenomena from a perspective which is not relevant to medicine. And here is an uh, example, cogito ergo sum, which is a philosophical proposition by René Descartes, translated into English as I think, therefore I am. Now, this statement does not apply to an unconscious patient in coma who exists despite of not thinking. So here you have a philosophical statement which is not uh, uh, manifested in the medical world. Only a conscious individual may say that I think, therefore I am. So we ask, what is consciousness made of? Where does consciousness come from? How does consciousness work? What is I am of a non-conscious patient in coma? What is non-conscious made of? And what is non-consciousness come from? And how does non-consciousness work? In order to treat or cure a patient with, who thinks that he is particularly when in coma, we need a framework in which these phenomena are uniquely defined. Philosophy and medicine are two thought styles. I shall therefore introduce the philosophy of Ludwig Fleck, who coined these concepts. Fleck is interested in the philosophical theory of reality rejecting any absolute objective criteria of knowledge. There is no objective and absolute truth. Truth in science is a function of a particular thinking style by a group of scientists or thought collective. A thought collective is a community of persons exchanging ideas or maintaining intellectual interaction. The individuals of a thought collective share the same thought style. Truth and falsehood in science are meaningful only within a specific thought collective and with respect to a given thought style and depend on the purpose of investigation. Different views can be equally true. So, here you have it. I think, therefore, I am is uh, a statement examined by two thought styles. Philosophy, which is interested in ontology and epistemology, this may be a relevant statement. But in medicine, which is uh, interested in health and disease, I think, therefore, I am has a total different meaning. The meaning is linked to the concept of health and disease. So here you have an example. You have an illustration of mind and brain. And it appears as if the mind and brain are somehow connected, but again, it is Medically, it doesn't make sense because we don't know how the diseases of this mind and uh, brain. And so, therefore, this is our task now to evaluate what we can, how we can improve medical thought. So, or, for instance, here, you can uh, hear uh, in our in other thought style that there's an interaction between brain and mind and but 
what is this interaction about? We want to specify this interaction in a precise manner within our thought style. In order to proceed, I have to introduce another great philosopher, George Canguillem. In his book, Le Normal et le Pathologique, he writes, among others, the normal is symptomless and is not perceived. Only the pathological draws our attention and through disease we appreciate the normal. And he cited Lerich, another great thinker and physician of the 19th century, at every moment there lies within us many more physiological possibilities than physiology would tell us about, but it takes disease to reveal them. And Kanguyang adds, disease reveals normal functions to us at the precise moment when it deprives us of their exercise. So if we go back to our first image, it makes sense only if it is embedded in our thought style, which is interested in norm, normal and pathological, in health and disease, and uh, uh, it makes sense only after we realize that there, is, there are pathologies or diseases of the mind, like schizophrenia and autism, and there is also a disease uh, in the brain, uh, which is encephalitis. So only then make these statements a, sen uh, a sense in the medical thought style. So here you are, uh, here is my representation of a proposal for a medical thought style. And we ask, first of all, who, what is the atom of this thought style? Because every th theory has basic proposition and atom. And uh, so the atom is me, and it has two representation. Me is what I feel, and there is also the medical image of me. This is how medicine perceives me, I and mean, both representation of me are part of the medical thought style. So here uh, is some definition. A symptom is any objective evidence of disease, while a sign is any objective evidence of disease. Therefore, a symptom is a phenomenon that is experienced by the individual affected by the disease, while a sign is a phenomenon that can be detected by someone other than the individual affected by the disease. So this is that me, all what I feel is known as symptoms, and all that medicine observes in me is uh, called science. And both atoms are the unit of uh, the medical thought style. So let me introduce the wisdom of the body, which I regard as a theory of the thought style. It is a theory that provides a simple framework for medically relevant concepts in our culture. WOB is a framework for medical thought style. The elementary unit or atom of this framework is me. I therefore start with the question, who am I? Two entities operate in my body, the conscious which I call mind, and the non-conscious called WOB. Mind is all that I am aware of in me, like my thoughts, feelings, and will. Wisdom of the body is all in me which I am not conscious of. In short, mind stands for my consciousness, and wisdom of the body stands for my non-consciousness. Mind serves here as a metaphor for the conscious and warp for the non-conscious. 
Actually, there are operational definitions for exploring the medical potential of the non-conscious. I am less concerned with their nature and mainly suggested in their communication and I discuss it in several presentations. Mind and Vogue are two indivisible entities. They differ only by their attribute of consciousness. Together they form me, the atom of the medical thought style. Mind and Vogue communicate in me their signals are described in other presentations. So here you have our first representation. I distinguish between two kinds of explanations or narrative. First person explanation means how I understand my mind and Bob, known as I point of view. Third person explanation is what medicine has to say about my mind and warp. So it is strictly, I feel symptoms and medicine looks for signs. Mind or my consciousness and warp, my non-consciousness, define me from the first person perspective and they differ from the third person definition which regard consciousness and non-consciousness as two state in my existence. And this is uh, very important because for me consciousness and non-consciousness exist now. For medicine it is a two states. Either I am, uh, I am conscious or I am in coma. Mind and Bob had different memories. Mind memories may be recalled. Warm memory remembers all my non-conscious faculties which I, mind, cannot recall. The Freudian subconscious is part of the mind since it may be recalled. So, for instance, I decide to raise my hand. Mind, I remember that I can raise my hand. Wob remembers how to raise my hand, but I don't know how Wob raises my hand. When my hand ra rises, special senses in Wob inform me, the mind, about the hand position. Mind and Wob are separated by one way filter called Verge. It lets information from mind to Wob and prevents any backward signal since warp is non-conscious. So this verge is a very important concept in medicine which has to be explored and I discussed it in several presentations. And uh, it was also mentioned by a great philosopher like uh, Henri Bergson the, 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 uh, who said that major part of our brain are dealing with the function to prevent its uh, secret so-called uh, and uh, mind is not aware of them and therefore we need this concept of verge in order to understand several pathologies in uh, this connection which I discuss in other presentations. Senses provide information through two channels, to mind it's conscious and to warp non-conscious. Senses transform chemical and physical signals into images. Information from warp to mind is conveyed indirectly by chemical senses in warp. Whatever I will is transmitted to warp as image for execution. Sensation of sense is converted into a distinct image. It is remembered in the mind as an image. Usually we take image to be a picture, but uh, remember a melody is an image of a sound or sound sequence. A smell of a steak or its taste are two images of steak 
So image is more than a picture. You may regard it as a representation of the sense. Images are stored in as memories. Mind has two serial memories, short term and long term, and what memory is embedded in its processes and is parallel. Short-term memory is what I experience now, which is continually updated. Actually, it is a process. Information reaching it is converted into images in the mind. World is a multi-dimensional image. Above all, I think in images. Suppose that my hand became paralyzed. Mind, remember that I can raise my hand, but Bob forgot it. Generally, when I decide my my will to raise my hand, I communicate it to Bob, and it executes my will. Whatever I will is ex executed unconsciously by Bob. Mind converts its messages to Bob by imagination. When I decide to raise my hand, in a split of a second, I imagine this task, which is transmitted to Bob for execution. Image is a process, and our conscious mind is a set of process images. So let's go back to this uh, relationship between mind and 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 me, in terms of the medical thoughts. That I, oh, when I think on this, on this means all what I know is conscious. So this uh, relationship between mind and me is represented in me as a conscious part of this thought style. So here you have the mind, which is constant, conscious, and then there's a warp in me, which is unconscious. And therefore the representation of me in this uh, diagram is, it is an image which tries to communicate to the warp, but it is uh, the back is, uh, pro is uh, protected or Whatever happens in the warp is protected or filtered by the verge. And how is medicine looks at me? So I said we are, I am. There are two representation of me in medicine. So the medicine looks at me, and uh, it it knows things about my non-conscious, it has a theories about non-conscious and therefore the, the representation of me as seen by medicine includes the entire uh, picture, mind, uh, image uh, and mind and Bob or image and uh, function, but you have to remember that whatever medicine thinks of me, it's not exactly the same of what I feel and therefore when medicine said I have a mind this is not the same mind because the medicine cannot understand my I experience of the mind so here's another example about the concept of thought style Max Planck, uh, after his great discoveries, wrote some that all matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. And then he adds, we must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. And so what did he think when he wrote this uh, thing? Again, he was thinking in the 
philosophy thought style. And uh, therefore, he believed that there's a metaphysical, conscious and intelligent mind. But we cannot uh, understand such a philosophical statement because uh, we regard this statement that it is the conscious and intelligent mind of me who created the Max Planck theory of uh, hidden particles. And this uh, ought to illustrate how that many, many statements about me and mind in the philosophy are not relevant to medicine and are interpreted in a different way by the medical thought style. So here are several uh, presentation on the wisdom of the body and mind and you are invited to listen to them and uh, particularly I, you are invited to the following presentation conscious manipulation of the non-conscious so in me I know that I have a non-conscious I don't know what this non-conscious is doing how it keeps me in life alive but I can consciously manipulate it and this is very important in this warp thought style enjoy <laughs> 